The aim of the Haptel project is to design, develop and evaluate a virtual learning system which includes haptic and synthetic devices. At the Dental Institute at King's College London, the workstations have been developed to replicate the position that dentists normally work in and it is hoped that this digital system can help the undergraduates to improve their manual dexterity. One of the things that it's difficult to do in a dental course is to see how well the students have understood the amount of pressure they put on when they're removing decay material in the tooth and when they're putting on too much pressure and how you actually convey that to them. So where haptics is really valuable is it gives them feedback directly using a virtual environment and it can also store information about how hard they have pushed. So it's a sort of more systematic feedback method than the individual tutor who will be going around the room not watching them all the time. There are three major technologies that are being used in these devices. One is called the haptics and that's actually giving the sense of touch through force, weight, dimension. So as the haptic touches on a virtual tooth, the students then would feel the actual drilling. We have the 3D monitor sending uh, two different signals to each eye and it fuses the images together, therefore gives this, uh, this uh, illusion of depth. And the other one is actually head tracking movement, changing the graphic scene depending on the user's head movement. The actual cost of the haptic itself is 4,000 pounds compared to it's actually a fifth of the traditional dental chair simulator that they use at the moment. This morning we're going to be doing a class one cavity on a lower... This is the clinical simulation laboratory where dental students learn how to perform operative techniques. Here we need extracted teeth in order to practice on. Getting extracted teeth is getting much more difficult uh, due to legislation about body parts. We're getting to the stage where we're using more and more plastic teeth. These have got a significant cost implication, ranging from about 10 to 15 pounds per tooth. Uh, the haptics offers the capability of being able to stop and redo the procedure as many times as they wish. I think it's helped out massively. You can actually feel the difference between the different tissues, um, which is great. As we got towards the end of the year, we did a lot more clinical work and uh, manual dexterity became a really key aspect of what we were doing and the fact that you can just keep having goes over and over again it was a really big thing for me this year. One of the ways that our project may differ from some other projects is that the staff were involved in the proposal and actually on the team. So their reaction has been very positive because they're part of the project. What we want to do in the future is make the Haptel laboratory available to students when they want to use it. Potentially the student would be able to train on their own and we could have systems in the library so in the evenings if a student felt they needed to get more practice they could go into the library, uh, we could have a haptic laboratory and they could actually practice there. It was essential for the project, the dentistry staff and the students that the effectiveness of the workstations was compared with the traditional clinical approach taken in the first year on the dentistry course. We've measured the evidence in lots of ways. We've used psychology tests to test them before they've used the haptics at the end of it and to see how their manipulation skills have improved and their three-dimensional skills. And what we found was that the students who had used just the haptic environment did as well in treating a tooth at the end of the three months, even though they never treated a real tooth in their lives. What we're hoping to do in the long term with the results of the Haptel project is to analyse the results in the light of other teaching and learning subjects, for example in medicine and in veterinary undergraduate courses. So the research methods will be tried and tested against other research methods so that people will be able to use those in other scenarios to evaluate the impact on learning as well. So you could look at the Haptel project and say this is a way to train dentists more effectively. And if it is a way to do that, that's a very good thing. But there is a bigger issue, and the bigger issue for the Haptel project is if we take out of the equation everyday face-to-face -face activity and replace it by virtual activity, uh, what kind of new pedagogies are appropriate? They have to think about what it means to learn and what it means to teach with the new technology. The next stage of the project is the launch of the second prototype. This prototype would include a dental mirror, not just a dental handpiece. So students would then use their two hands and not just one hand. The system would also include a teaching interface providing automatic feedback, learning from their 
different attempts. In the future, it will be able to capture some screen activities of the students and students can just access it over the web and they can replay and learn from them. Well, the equipment's been excellent. The moment we can actually do cavity preparations, but haptics can develop further. We could teach them how to extract teeth, to do gum surgery, the whole gamut of the procedures that a dentist can do. The project is coming to an end with its funding, but we definitely see it as a start of the dental curriculum revolution, if you like.